Good evening, and welcome to the Writer's Block. I'm your host, John Ronan, and as you know now, because we're in our 23rd year, I interview writers about their craft, what they've done in the past, what they're working on now, what they might have planned for the future. We do have other kinds of artists on besides writers. Occasionally, we've had on sculptors, uh, actors, uh, performers of different kinds, musicians. Uh, if you do have an idea for an artist for the writer's block, we cast a pretty wide net. Watch for our address at the end of the show and send in your suggestions. We'd be glad to get them. I also want to mention, in connection with our 23rd year, that we are very proud of that record at Cape Ann TV. However, we're only one of many programs generated here by Cape Anners for Cape Ann. It's a wonderful community service made possible by the contributions from cable. It's not something you can get with or through DISH, so remember that when the salesman calls. Tonight, I'm very happy to say we have a wonderful writer, poet, Rufus Collinson, or Ruth Ann, as she's known more formally sometimes, but Rufus to, to all her friends and admirers. Rufus Collinson is the present poet laureate of Gloucester, as you probably know, and she was born and raised in Gloucester. She attended West Parish School and then Central Grammar, and Gloucester High School, and farther down the line, Gordon College. I want to mention that she is now living in Central Grammar, uh, which is a, uh, uh, an apartment building, a condominium sort of arrangement now. So she's living where she went to uh, grade school just uh, a few years uh, back. <laughs> uh, she uh, writes poetry, and she writes columns for the Gloucester Daily Times. She's published two books, Turning the Stones and Traveling to You. Rufus Collinson, welcome to the Writer's Block. Thank you. I'm so happy well, to be here welcome with you. Welcome back. Thank uh, you. I'm glad that you, <laughs> that you were able uh, to come back. Uh, tell us something about uh, your adventures as a poet laureate, what you've been doing. Well, um, I do, um, through the, the Writer's Center in East Gloucester, we have a poet laureate series. Um, and what I've been trying to do is to um, introduce um, poets who don't read as, as often. We have, we have a lot of poets in Gloucester, and a, just amazing number. So that series has it's really been fun. And, and, um, and that's, the, so the Writers' Center is in East Gloucester, yeah. and it's Vincent Farini's former. Yes, Can you home. mention where, where it is? It's, um, it's on East Main Street. I think it's 126 East Main Street. And it's, um, it's right after um, the Richdale there acro and across from the Harbor House. It's, um, and if we have big events um, that won't fit in, in, that, in that house, that pretty tiny. we go across the street to the Harbor House. Uh -huh. um, so that's wonderful. I love working with Henry, Henry Farini and Annie Thomas. And that's a great venue. And... Um, I write the a column for the Gloucester Times um, about poetry, kind of poetry in the season or some or what's happening in the city. Um, work with the schools, which is one of my favorite parts of being poet laureate. The, um, usually also at the Writer's Center we have students who read as part of the evening as well. Um, I'm finding that poetry is a, a whole different force than it was when, when I was young. It was kind of um, made fun of. Now it's very much embraced. Um, we have some amazing young poets. Um, oh, no, so, it's good to hear. Yeah. And uh, occasional um, events in other places like the library. But that's, I think that's pretty much it. I know uh, I, I, I resonate with what you were saying. If you tell people, if you used to tell people you were a poet, or sometimes even people among our generation, they, they back away as if you <laughs> had TB or something. They don't know what to say. Yeah, it's very, it's very much changed. That's good to hear. And um, some of the classes that, um, what, I, what I usually do is to, um, to take a class on a silent walk, talk a little bit, 
um, in the beginning about being open with all of their senses, noticing what they see, what they hear and feel. And then in silence, come back into the classroom and have them write for a little period of time. And what they, what they come up with is amazing. And there, one fifth grade class I was in wrote a group poem that was about Gloucester. Incredible. So there's really, there's a lot of lively poetry going on. It's wonderful to hear. It, yeah. I have to ask, because you're back in Central Grammar living as an adult, <laughs> if you've gone back to uh, West Parish. I, well, I, um, I, I, I go there sometimes with my grandchildren. They play on the playground, but I haven't, um, I haven't done a, a class there. But I look forward to it. Just being in the corridor brings me right back to my shy little self. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done some complete loops to West Parish, Central Grammar, and... And of course, you uh, you visit the high school. So. Yeah, I wrote a poem called "Jumping In" because um, when I went to Central Grammar, um, we played jump rope outside, and I never could jump in without tripping. And um, a, one of my really lovely classmates taught me when the rope is at its highest arc, then jump in. And so I learned to jump in there, and now I'm jumping in again. <laughs> that's, a nice, that's a nice metaphor. Good jump rope. Uh, it's really fun to watch. It's really uh, I want to uh, mention again the titles of your books, Turning the Stones and Traveling to You, and you brought in uh, the Traveling to You book, and I want to, which we talked about the last time you were on, <laughs> but you've mentioned, I've, I've mentioned that title, so I wanted to hold it up again. Uh, it's uh, still available, and uh, I want to ask you now about your personal writing. I know you're writing all the time. One thing that our reviewers always ask about, and I get feedback, is people want to know w how writers make themselves write. Do you, do you wake up every morning real early or every afternoon, or do you just sort of write when it feels good? Well, I feel that... Um for me, po poetry is kind of a way of living. Um, it's about noticing, um, being present in your life. And what, what I find most often is not so much that I've created the poem as I've seen the poem. Um, I have a poem about um, a woman, my first morning living on the boulevard, near the boulevard. There was a woman who, who came she was kind of stooped and got out of her car and walked really slowly toward the harbor. And at the same time, a swan was swimming toward her. And she called to the swan, she knew, she knew. And the swan looked up and swam to her. And she walked slowly down. And the swan came out of the water. She put her arms out. The swan put its neck on her shoulder. Swans are not, you know, known to be friendly. They're kind of aggressive animals. And, and embraced there. And I, I, all I did was see it. I went home and wrote it down. And that, that was a poem. So I think so, very often um, it's, it's about being um, just present in the moment and seeing, seeing what you do. I have a, you were living near the boulevard before you moved to Central Grand. Yes, a yeah. A couple, a little while back. I can tell you, you, you remember that very powerfully. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> it was, an, and, I, and I saw it more than once. But I have grocery, I think I have more grocery store and laundromat poems than, than many poets. Because <laughs> you just see um, the grocery so store genre of, yeah. of poetry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you had brought a couple of poems, a couple of new poems. Yes. Can you share one with us? At Sh this point? Sure. Let's see. Now, these are new. These are not from the. These are not from the published. Book. One of the most amazing things that um, has happened in my life recently is um, having grandchildren. There's really nothing like it. So this was. Um, a poem I wrote shortly after my first granddaughter was born, so almost three years about ago. Three years ago? Yeah. It's called Return to Innocence for Georgia Kate. 
staring now into the endless blue of your searching eyes, taking in the scent of your newborn head, the fragrance of your recent emergence, the sweet speak of your budding mouth, the endless splay of your tiny fingers. I return to love before love, before definition. I want to go forth with you now to discover the life within life. I want to recognize this innocence, this infinite beginning in everyone I meet. Very nice. I love the scent of the head. These <laughs> heads do have a, they a, do. an aroma. They do. A distinct aroma. <laughs> uh, how many grandchildren do you have? Just two. two they live little. five minutes away. So they're right in town here. <laughs> yes, I'm so lucky. And you see them every day? Not every day, but several times a week. So, what's their nickname for you? Ruru. Ruru? <laughs> Ruru, I'll remember that. Ruru. <laughs> now, when you, uh, you conceived that poem when you were with your, uh, your granddaughter, uh, and did you take notes at the time, or did you just register that I've got to put this down later? What was the process of, of writing that? Um, well, I think there is beyond... Um, being in the moment and, and um, noticing, um, you do clearly need to set aside a time to write. I don't do it at the same time every day, but um, I try to. I have a notebook always on my coffee table. So um, I had been noticing different aspects um, of, of this new life, um, and I just wrote it down. Um, I, I, it came to me as I was writing. It, it all came to me. So when you get up in the morning, do you think, I've, I'm going to write today two hours or three hours, and then see in your day where that can fit? Do you have a certain time requirement? No, I, I don't. But I, I, many people do, and it's probably a good idea. What I do, I try to, to meditate um, before I leave, leave my house about being in the moment. It's more, for, for me, the, the focus is more that. And then sometimes I have a notebook with me every, all the time. And so I, I might just write notes, even in the car or um, this is a paper notebook? In, the, in the laundromat. It's an old analog system, yeah. It's a paper notebook, yeah. Good. I do enter them Good. into the computer later. <laughs> so how long did that poem take you? Did, did you write one draft, two, three? I generally... Um, it kind of write the scope of the poem and then revisit it for 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 details, you know, to expand on the details a bit. Um, so that's and, and what the, is your granddaughter's name again? Georgia. Georgia. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for sharing that. You have another one? Did, this did? one, yes. This is a very <laughs> this was a winter day. <laughs> and it's called The Watched Pot. The Watched Pot. Pot. Pot, yes. It had been a long afternoon of aloneness when I put the pan of water on the stove to boil. At first, there is just the slight sound of change, and then the collection of crystalline bubbles at the bottom of the pan, hundreds of perfect orbs gathering, bouncing, becoming, a sphere of waves and light and purpose reminding me again of all that is possible within a day. <laughs> what was the line uh, uh, that starts out, a, a swear, a smear of purpose? A sphere of sphere. waves. Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> I just, honestly, I was watching the water boil, <laughs> and all of a sudden I thought, it, it's beautiful. This is just... Amazing, look at these gathering bubbles. And, and I just sat down and wrote it. Thought, hey, watched pot. <laughs> <laughs> Did it take a long time? No. <laughs> it's watched pots too? <laughs> it wasn't that long. It was, but it was a day of being alone all day. And so this was the big event. <laughs> <laughs> Could you read that again? It's a brief poem. The Watched and Pot? I had not seen it before, and I want to make sure that I and our viewers uh, get it. Okay. After your kind of description of... Okay. So look with me into the pot on the stove. It had been a long afternoon of aloneness 
when I put the pan of water on the stove to boil. At first, there is just the slight sound of change, and then the collection of crystalline bubbles at the bottom of the pan. Hundreds of perfect orbs gathering, bouncing, becoming a sphere of waves and light and purpose, reminding me again of all that is possible within a day. <laughs> Very nice. I notice you say aloneness, not loneliness, but yes. alone, being alone, mm -hmm. which is often valuable, not, uh, not something to be shunned or disparaged. Yeah. Sometimes <clears throat> it's, it's a time to collect, I think. <laughs> so uh, you said you don't pick a time every day, a specific time to write, but do you write every day? No, not every day. Um, I might um, note um, in my little notebook that I, that I carry with me, I may note images. Um, the other night I was um, see, by, in front of my friend's house that, uh, where there's a lawn that opens up to the ocean and the open sky. And um, all of a sudden I saw all of these images of flight, just birds, leaves, everything. And so I, you know, I got my notebook and, um, and noted those images. Um, and, I'll, and the feeling that they evoked in me. So you can I'll, retrieve that emotion later. Yeah, or, or try yeah. To. Mm -hmm. Here's the big, <laughs> tough question. If you don't write on a certain day, do you feel badly about it? Feel guilty? Say, darn, I should have fit some time in there. I don't, but... Um, oh, good, you've got to teach me how to do that. Well, the, the richness of life, it, life is, is fairly rich right now. The, being able to serve the place you love, doing what you love, is pretty amazing. So I'm loving being poet laureate, and a grandmother, and my my friends. Um, so um, I I don't. I, sometimes I'm so involved in in life that I I just don't take the time to write. But I'm practically always taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. The, um, I'm curious always when I talk to other writers, especially poets. Uh, whom they read, if they, if they read anybody else. Uh, do you have favorite poets, or are you, do you have a book or two or three of poetry uh, next to the bed that you look at uh, over and over again, or do you have new people coming in all the time? I have um, one, one bookcase that is all poetry, and um, it's, it's all organized alphabetically. Um, and Good for you. <laughs> I, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't been reading as much recently, but that's more because I've, I've been busy. But just the other day, I, I pulled out Billy Collins, who I love, whom I love. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could have him for a friend. I, I, I love his perspective. And, um, and I, I really like Mary Oliver. And, uh, oh, there's... There's barely a poet that I, whom I don't like. Um, there's, there's, you know, so many different ways of expressing poetry. Um, but yeah, I usually, I usually do read it, or I get um, poetry magazine, or you know, some. Yeah. I love to read it as well as uh, write it. I like the idea that your poetry is all organized. When I try to find a book in my shelves. I can't find it half the time because I never want to take the time to organize them and I pay, I pay the price. Yeah, yes, it's, it, it does help. When I moved into Central Grammar, I thought one of the things I'm gonna do is have a bookcase that has only poetry and it's gonna be alphabetical. <laughs> it's very helpful. <laughs> it does. I was looking for Farini the other night there. There it was, under F. Yeah. <laughs> good, it's a good system. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to ask you to share some advice with, uh, with our viewers about people who want to write poetry um, and what they, uh, what, they, what they should do, and also um, technically what they should do about uh, getting it published. Two, two questions. Well, um, I think one of the things that has been 
consistently most helpful to, to me in terms of um, t developing the writing has been in a, to be in a writing group. Um, and um, you, you usually, usually can find one if you're, you know, um, if you know someone who, who writes and you, or maybe even organize a group, probably a small group, maybe six, but that's always been really helpful. Um, and, um, and we, well, excuse me, well, I get calls and I get letters to this show about writing groups. Where can someone go to find out about what groups are available locally? The Writer Center. Um, the Writer through. Center uh, um, has offers many groups there, but also has contact. I think of information. And they have a website um, as well. Yes. Cluster yeah. Writers. That would be the first thing that comes to my mind. Other than that, it's kind of individuals. But um, if you know someone who writes um, and is published, perhaps asking them. Um, but I would go to the Writer Center. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be my first, my first suggestion. Um, publishing, <laughs> you know, now with self-publishing, you can if it, just put it together and, <laughs> and get, get it made into a book. You can, I mean, it's, it's really quite easy to do. And the publisher, um, in my job, I work at Project Adventure as book developers, so I have contact with printers. And um, I, they're, they're, you really don't have to publish, have that many printed. Do you send so out the affordable. magazines or enter uh, online? S sometimes, not, not so much. I used to more when I, w when I was younger. I don't think, um, hmm. I've had I've had a couple published, um, but not in New Yorkers never responded. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I really think and writing groups are helpful with that too. Um, there, you know, there's there are usually people who have suggestions about where to send your particular kind of uh, writing. And then writers group keep your own energy up uh, too? Well, also you want to, you want to have something to, to bring to it. So f for me, it helped me to, um, to finish things because um, I wanted to bring it to the writing group. And uh, it's uh, very motivating. So now. a deadline. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deadline's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and other people have said that worked that way for them too. I got the five minute signal about oh. three minutes ago, so <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to begin to, uh, to wrap up. If you could give two words of advice, not, not two words, but two items of advice to writers, poets or journalists or any aspiring writer, what, what would you say? Two, two pieces of advice. Um, I, I think f what, what's been most helpful for me is, is the, the whole concept of being in the moment of noticing. And I try to meditate, um, to, you know, not maybe 10 minutes before I leave the house with that focus. And then sometimes I wear a jewelry or something that will remind me to be in the moment, to notice, to notice what's around you and to feel, to feel it. Um, I think that and, and carrying a notebook, <laughs> carrying a notebook. <laughs> and noting practice. those things as, as they come alive to you and then setting aside a time to, you know, to put it together. But um, I think so presence, it's, pen, <laughs> and, and time. Yeah. Uh, Rufus Collinson, I want to thank you very much for coming down and being on the Writer's Block. Again, it's been a really pleasure. Oh, well, thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> I want to thank our readers, our readers. I want to thank poetry readers and our viewers out there in cable television land for being with us this evening on the Writer's Block. If you've learned something about poetry from Rufus Collinson and how to be sensitive and in the moment, in the poetic sense, then the Writer's Block has done its job. Hope to see you again next week on the Writer's Block. Good night. <laughs>